Hey guys, how y'all doing? I uh, wanted to make a little update video. Um, I kind of wanted to make a, a video of uh, explaining kind of what it's like um, day to day to live on an oil rig and live and work on an oil rig. And um, I'm going to be going through the kind of process of getting hired and what, what to expect getting out there and especially um, just kind of what, what, what to expect. Um, I know right now it's a really bad time to uh, um, be working in the oil and gas industry. Today I think oil hit um, in the negatives and uh, thoughts and prayers go out to all the oil field workers and I know that's tough with this uh, situation going on but um, I'm going to give my uh, kind of general experience and knowledge to try to share kind of what I learned. Um, I'm actually not currently working out there at the moment. Um, I worked there last year and learned a lot, but um, I got laid off, but it wasn't due to um, due to this sit current situation. It was actually due to an injury, and I'll be making another video on that later. So what to expect? I was uh, I had no experience, prior experience um, working. Um, I knew uh, one one guy that was pretty high up that uh, actually got in contact with him, went over my resume, and he kind of got me in, my foot in the door. But uh, the first step was I got hired by a contractor, and it was for a um, pretty big company, a well-known company, but I was working through a contractor through them so I got the phone call had a phone interview with one of the higher-up guys at the big company I got all those phone calls phone interviews got done got done with those then the contractor contacted me got that all set up and then I was supposed to get my certifications and certification cards and training and the contractor I was working for told me to go to Houston for two hour supposed to be a two day eight hour training to get fully certified to work out there it would be the H2S um, certification trenching a couple other ones general OSHA um, general certifications um, I actually went down to Houston and went into a classroom filled out some paperwork and then the um, the gentleman at the training took me out of the classroom handed me my certifications and um, I was on my way I didn't get any training any I watched uh, maybe a three-minute video but that was um, from the beginning that was not very good starting point because I didn't get properly trained as I should have I contacted um, the contractor let them know what happened they said that that wasn't right um, I was gonna get trained in Odessa once I got up there and uh, I'm currently I was currently in Houston and that's about eight to ten hours up to Midland Odessa I was like okay that, that, that that's fine uh, as long as I get trained so then they said I'll get trained up in Odessa I don't hear anything really and then all of a sudden the uh, higher up at the big company I was working with he calls me tells me when what date I will be leaving and where I will be going I mentioned to him what I didn't get any training and I was gonna get trained up in Odessa and he said to contact the contractor it was a big mess so I figured I wouldn't get any training or whatever. Um, so uh, I figured I might as well just go up there, see what it's like. I wasn't sure. Um, I wasn't really, I was kind of worried about going, not having any training experience, but I, I wanted to give it a shot, kind of kind of just see what it was like out there. So I finally left, got all my stuff packed. They said, told me five items to bring. It was work clothes. Um, 
you wear your coveralls, um, gloves, and your work boots, steel toe work boots. Got all that taken care of, got some other clothes, and um, got that all done. And then I headed up for um, New Mexico, and it was about 10 hours to New Mexico. It was right on the Texas state line. So I left um, a day before, drove about halfway, stayed at a hotel halfway, got to the hotel about midnight, maybe a little later, went, went to bed, woke up early, drove and drove till I hit Jal, New Mexico, one of the worst cities I've ever been to. Nothing there, but just a oil field town. I got there. Um, I ate some lunch and uh, was on my way to the specific rig that they told me to go to. Kept driving and the way it works is, so at the very top you have the big company um, head honchos up top over your specific program. I was in solids control. It's more of an operator type job, even though you're still living on the rig day to day. So you have the higher ups there, and then you have your supervisor, and then um, you rarely ever see them because you're working on the rig and they're at their man camps working different rigs. So um, you have your supervisor and then your other solids control hands you work with. There's usually about two guys per rig. So I finally got to my rig, New Mexico. I followed the map and there's literally nothing out there but, but fields and fields and rigs. That's about all there is. Um, I finally got there. I pull up to the location and you're going to be driving on a lease road to the actual rig, which is a huge property with the roads winding through. There could be multiple rigs. So the first rig I pull up to, I pull up to the lease road. It's about five miles from the main road highway. So let's see. The first rig I pull up to is, uh, it was Noram 23 up in New Mexico. Right outside of Jal. It was about an hour from town, which wasn't bad, but it was um, pretty annoying. So I pull up, no idea where to go or what to do. Um, I call my contractor to see if he can tell me who's out there and where to go. I pull up and there's actually three rigs in a row. And I'll try to include some pictures to try to sh give y'all kind of a better idea of the story I'm telling. But um, I pull up and a nice guy comes out. His name is Aaron and he works for the big company. And I get everything um, out of my truck into the house. And the way it works is you, you actually live on site and I was living, it's, uh, you live in a portable housing unit. And the way it, it typically comes down to is um, you live in a portable housing unit that usually has two bedrooms, a main kitchen area, a living room, and then two bathrooms. And then the, this one particularly had a um, office on the end of it. And for the most part, you always would would stay with the mud engineer. So us solids control, two solids control guys stay with, there's usually one mud engineer and you're working with the mud engineer and he's usually, he's kind of like telling you what to do um, to try to get that mud weight where he wants it um, and how that, how that works. <sighs> get my stuff out, get it in, get inside to my, into my room and, um, the trailers are pretty nasty. They're, 
the, the first one I went to, it was not very nice. It's just an older trailer uh, house. But um, some of the other ones I moved up to were actually nicer. Um, so I get there and I actually just go outside with Aaron and he just shows me around, shows me what it's like out there. He took me to the backyard, showed me that the equipment that I would be working with, the excavator, it was actually a front loader at that, at that rig. Um, they had the, instead of a usual um, setup with an excavator scooping out of the um, bins, they actually had a front loader scooping out and then you would, you would scoop into a portable bin on the side so it was a little different setup than the normal setup. But he shows me around and then from there, I got my schedule kind of mixed up because you were supposed to be working with the day guy and the night guy. I ended up working with mainly the um, night guy. So how it works is you would have 12 hour shifts and you work from, let's say, about 5 a.m. See, the first rig was not very, it was not a very nice rig. Um, very dirty and they didn't even have any safety meetings or anything. So, once I got to other rigs that were, other precision rigs that were really nice, some of the cleanest rigs out there, um, you would have your safety meeting at 5 a.m if you were working days. And then you, if you were working nights, it would be around 5 p.m. You'd have your safety meeting, about 5.30. And then you'd get done with that, exchange over with the day guy. And I would just go to work and whatever he was doing, I would continue, whether that's running machines, running the centrifuges. And then if those machines weren't running, there's no trucks running to come haul waste off then we're just kind of waiting to see what what needs to be done or you're working with the other um working with the rig to, to, to if they need other assistance or help so i'm going to give a little breakdown once i moved up i actually moved up to a better rig i got moved the noram rig moved they were done there so i got sent to another rig um with precision drilling which was actually a really nice rig one of the cleanest out there um, super nice guys um, so you would have a, typically you would have a um, you'd have your safety meeting with the safety guy um, about 5 30 then you you exchange over with um, whoever the the day guy and you're, you're just going to work but um, how it works out there is they have the rig crew that works directly on the rig and you're assisting those guys seeing if they need help with anything um, but the chain of command goes from the very top is the company man he's the number one guy taking care of everything making sure everything's getting done and you report to him he's the head honcho company man then you have your safety guys. Then from there, you have your safety guys. And then you have your company. Since I was working for a bigger company, I have my company supervisor. <clears throat> you report to him if any, any problems with the machines, anything. First person you report to is company man. Get, make sure that's taken care of. <clears throat> the guys I worked with, super professional guys. I had issue with one company man, but he was a known to be difficult to deal with. All the other guys, super nice guys. All the other rig guys, some of the hardest working guys I've ever worked with. Don't ever bother you. I never had any problems with anybody yelling at me or anything like that. Um, so that was really cool. I, I didn't. I didn't know what to expect. I knew it would be the type of work environment I didn't know what I knew it was different but I just didn't know what to expect but um so you have your safety guy and supervisor and then you have your other mud engineer and then your fellow 
solids control guys and there's other 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 people that are living on the rig also which would be more drilling you have your driller um i, I can go down the list about all that but then you have maybe there's directional drilling on site and then there's some other other stuff geologists uh, maybe te testing the soil stuff like that but overall i would say it was just a super cool experience to go out there see what it's like live out there and just get a huge grasp of understanding and knowledge of of what i learned myself and knowing nothing to get to to to, to learning so much about it which is really cool i highly recommend getting some experience whether that's working out there i'm just going to talk about kind of what to expect out there i had no clue what what i was getting into but um solid control it's really not that hard it's mainly um it's a pretty wimpy job um it pays good it pays just as much as uh, working directly on the rig but the reason why is because those guys working on the rig they they work two weeks on and then they go home for two weeks then they they work then they come back so that's the kind of cycle they work us got us solids control guys we work two weeks on and then we get one week off which to be honest was pretty terrible because i live down in houston area and that was 10 hours up up to new mexico so i'd get done with my shift <clears throat> leave either that night or the next morning and it would take me a day or two it would take me a full day and the next day and a half to get home so that's already six six and a half days left and then i'd got ho come home get some stuff done wash my clothes and then i'd have to drive back up there couldn't take me another day and a half to drive back up so you really do not get enough time to see your folks or hang out with friends it's it's really um a very difficult job in that aspect you are making good money but the the, the type of strain it puts on those relationships um it's pretty difficult and then i would have enjoyed it a lot more if i actually had two weeks at home it would be so much better but it, it really it, it you really get in that work mode and you're just focused on working which is good but it's def definitely difficult um what i noticed working out there was the the working conditions they're pretty good um they're pretty safe for the most part, the safety guys constantly harping about um, just the basics. Um, don't be stupid out there. Don't just kind of the basic rules they have. But um, I will say that that um, once you start working out there, um, it's very toxic job. The toxic load is quite it's just difficult because you're working with the oil based mud drilling into the earth so right there the oil based mud and fluid is going to be toxic so there's a very strong odor um there's very strong um just a very strong odor and and then the um the one guy uh, I forgot what it would be um, one of the guys that work on the rig he'd be mixing chemicals into the mud and he's v mixing very toxic chemicals into the mud which can be breathed in that's another negative aspect um, and you will get dirty so you will get that whenever I'm servicing the centrifuge I'll get oil-based mud spraying it with a pressure washer trying to clean the centrifuge that shit sprays all over you so that's not the healthiest and then um, if you're working with the shakers you usually spray diesel they have a diesel pressure washer spray to clean those off you have to spray down the screens to get all that mud off there to not clog the screens that's another toxic aspect spraying that diesel going everywhere um, one time I sprayed it I was wearing gloves my regular PPE some my, my safety glasses boots my FR um my fr uniform 
and my gloves and I would be spraying that diesel and it soaked through my gloves and I actually had a skin reaction from the diesel. So that actually flared up and I had to go to the doctor out there. But um, after that happened, my supervisor actually gave me the correct PPE, which was an additional, these gloves that go up all the way up to your arms. So that's good that even though I had a reaction, uh, my company stepped in, gave me the proper PPE, gave me um, FR coverall, um, disposable coveralls, um, and some face shields and some masks. So that was really good. But the toxic load on your body, it's really not the healthiest job. Working 12 hours a day, you work the 12 hour shift. So I would work, I'd go to the safety meeting, chill out, and then I'd eat some dinner. And then I, I would work all night until um, the next guy woke up about 5.30. He'd go to the meeting and he'd replace my shift. And then I'd go to sleep, sleep all day. You'd work 12 hour days and then you'd be either on days or nights. And then I would work two weeks on days, go home, come back. And then I'd work 12 hour nights and it's supposed to just alternate that way. Um, I liked working nights because there wasn't a ton going on but the days are a lot more normal and he actually goes by faster, I think, working during the day than the nights just drag out. But there's some just some general knowledge working on an oil rig day to day, what it's like out there. I know this is a tough time trying to get a work out there. There's nothing going on. This, this, it's just bad, um, bad, time, or bad time right now. Hopefully it'll get taken care of. Hopefully the situation will get better, but um, let me know if you have any questions and, and I would love to just talk about more. I'm going to include some pictures and videos of what I, I saw out there and what it was like. It was super cool, super cool experience. I'm so glad I did it. And um, I, I'd, hope, I'd hope you get the chance to even try it out. Give it a go. Um, I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. And uh, thanks for watching this video. See ya. I found my fear in the ashes this town as it burned when the smoke entered my lungs suffocated on lessons i learned made it out